Hello and welcome back again. My name is Herman and on this channel we today have a second video on EPEEP MSCHAP V2. So if you didn't see the first one, uh, try to view it. Uh, we explained how you can uh, collect EPEEP MSCHAP V2 handshakes and in this video we will use those collected handshakes to get access to the network. So very in short what we are uh, trying to show here is uh, that uh, with EAP MSCHEP V2 and again the more thorough discussion is in uh, the previous video you have an uh, outer tunnel um, which is protected with uh, TLS so there is a server certificate on the radio server which is validated by the client or should be validated by the client so in the last video we saw that it's not that easy to make that uh, done properly and in that tunnel if it's set up then there will be an MSJAP v2 handshake and uh, we also found out that there are weaknesses in the MSJAP v2 protocol which makes it possible that if we capture those handshakes um, we can get to the password that the user was uh, using and in order to do that we had this uh, very quick setup with an uh, WPA2 Enterprise uh, Corporate SSID configured with uh, MSJAP authentication. Uh, we have some clients here connected and uh, we have an evil twin AP which uh, runs to an uh, evil radio server which uh, does not have the proper certificate of course but does share the same, uh, the same SSID. And what we saw in uh, last video is that uh, we can uh, collect those uh, clients and at least Android and deriv derivatives uh, will easily give up their handshakes and for the others um, there are tricks to fool people into uh, releasing that information. So once again uh, be warned only try this at home so uh, don't use this in the field it uh, will probably get you into trouble. So. In the last video we collected those uh, challenge responses uh, or handshakes and uh, I put them here in uh, this file. So if you have uh, this file uh, you can see here the uh, net NTLM and uh, this value uh, contains the challenges and the responses and this should bring us to uh, the password. So there's a very nice tool which is called uh, John the Ripper and John the Ripper is uh, standard tool sets of um, uh, standard tool sets of uh, Kali Linux for example and if you run the command here above you can uh, run John uh, against a word list and this word list has a list of uh, many thousands uh, passwords that are used uh, many times so the most easy passwords you will probably get them very quickly um, and here with the format we are cracking the NTLM uh, hashes so what we did here is if we run that command uh, you can see that after 13 seconds and this is not running on a very speedy machine it's uh, just an ESXi server running a lot of other stuff and uh, it's uh, it's an old server so if you have proper hardware probably it will run um, even much faster uh, but in 13 seconds you can see that we have uh, yeah, cracked most passwords for um, uh, for 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 these these devices, so um, now you can argue um, that uh, my users are picking very strong passwords. So sometimes that's true, uh, sometimes it's not, and uh, people tend to pick easy passwords, and they are likely to be in the uh, password list or in other password lists that are maybe a bit more extensive. Um, but it gets worse, so uh, we cannot only uh, brute force or um, um, or word list check the password uh, we can attack the uh, protocol so for the example I took a quite strong password which we will uh, definitely not find with a brute force attack because it's too long it has 32 characters and um, when I put it in this uh, password checker it sees there says that it has a very high entropy and entropy it's a uh, value of uh, strength of the password and it classifies it password indeed as very strong so um, security is overkill for this password so 
let's find how we can attack uh, people with these passwords. So I found a video uh, from DEFCON 20 where two people, Marty Maxi uh, Martinsberg and David Hulsen, uh, they analyze the protocol and um, you should see the video if you uh, if you like this and want to know uh, it better. But uh, in very short, um, in the protocol, it's just the anti-hash, which is an MD4 of the user password, which is the secret in this uh, algorithm. So everything else in green is uh, sent either in the clear or can be derived from uh, anything uh, sent in the clear. And if, as you can see here in the core, there are three death encryptions on the same uh, challenge hash, uh, which makes it uh, easy to uh, brute force the death protocol, which only has uh, 56 bits of uh, complexity. You can uh, brute force it and uh, due to some, uh, yeah, trouble in the algorithm, uh, you only have to run this uh, crack once and uh, you can crack all three in a single run uh, through the whole key space of, uh, of this. Again, very well explained in uh, this video here. And you can build uh, hardware crackers and they have been uh, out for years and uh, sometimes they are available even as a cloud service. So uh, these guys uh, offer the cloudcracker.com service where they can uh, where you can send in uh, your uh, collected handshakes and uh, for 17 uh, US dollar they will uh, give you back the anti-hash of the password and the bad thing is that in order to authenticate to the network we don't need the password we just need the anti-hash as you can see here in uh, the algorithm and that allows us to um, um, to, yeah, to to either um, connect to uh, a corporate network where we have cached, uh, cached those uh, challenge responses or we can uh, per impersonate the network uh, for a user and then uh, attack the client. So I don't have that desk cracker in my office, so it's not that easy, but um, for uh, not that much money, much money, you can build it with uh, some uh, some ASICs or uh, pro programmable ASICs. And uh, so I took for this example a shortcut. So uh, I moved our very strong password into uh, the anti anti uh, the anti hash, um, and in uh, the official version of this story, um, you sent the the, the 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 password challenge uh, the handshakes to uh, the cloud cracker, and then you get back um, the hash like this. Um, and I will show you that we can now log in with the anti hash to the network. So here I have again my uh, Kali Linux box, and I put in some uh, text configuration for the WPA supplicant, which is the standard. Uh, way of connecting to the network and we put in the SSID here and instead of the password I put in here hash colon and then our anti hash so that's uh, enough to connect to the network so let's see what happens if we issue this command so it's initializing the supplicant you see it's connecting and uh, you can even see now it's uh, successfully connected and here on top on my access point I can see that our user uh, SecureDo is now connected to the network. So that's um, pretty bad. And um, what's even worse is that you can perform these tests uh, yeah, with very limited budget. So uh, you can run it on Raspberry Pis or uh, boxes like these that have uh, uh, open WRT running on it. You just put in the uh, attacking radius server and um, you can even run it on an uh, on a USB power bank, uh, so it's very portable. So it's uh, very simple to do it. It's not no longer advanced. It's not expensive, and you don't need any uh, specialized equipment. So, in fact, it's pretty scary. So, without um, just warning you, um, so uh, where are we now, and what are the next steps? So. My first advice would be uh, go away from MS Jap V2. Some people still say that uh, if you properly protect your tunnel, um, 
it can be still secure and yes that is true so here on the right this is for windows 7 how to configure it if you can uh configure it and enforce this um so with uh, both the server uh, certificate validation with the proper name with the proper certificate authority and uh, disable the options for user to override the authentication uh, messages and connect anyway um, without all these settings and uh, enforced to the clients uh, you probably should not run MSCHEP v2 in uh, WPA2 enterprise uh, uh, environments this is nothing new but in this uh, video I decided to dive in it and it's uh, was even worse and clients are even more willing to connect to the network um, uh, than I uh, thought before. So also um, Android and uh, derivatives uh, are very uh, poor on this so uh, it's even very difficult to uh, make these settings on the on the right on those platforms and uh, other platforms uh, yeah probably are uh, as strong as your users are so if they are fooled as we saw in the previous video to accept the rogue certificate and you can set any value in that as you want then uh, you probably have an issue and this also applies uh, if you didn't connect uh, configure this correctly for computer uh, authentication so computer authentication with windows will use a randomized password which is very long so you cannot brute, for brute force it but you can attack it uh, this way and um, having said that um, i would also uh, try to avoid uh, whenever possible to use ms chap v2 integrated with active directory and there is a big problem because the big 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 thing on MSGF v2 is that it very nicely integrates with active directory but if you can crack the active directory account through one of these methods um, yeah people have uh, the keys to the kingdom and they can log into uh, stuff like webmail to VPNs uh, can log into systems so uh, I would try to avoid MSGF v2 um, if you are using Active Directory accounts or uh, basically any accounts that are of any any value, and if I uh, were asked to what what to do next, then uh, probably this is the opportunity to move away f uh, finally from passwords and move to uh, certificates. And if you want to do that, read the property uh, proper. Uh, make sure that those certificates are stored either in the TPM chip in your laptop, so they are very secure, or in a smart card. But uh, yeah, probably you will end up with some uh, alternatives and compromises. And um, but make sure um, um, the MSCHEP v2 protocol it's um, heavily broken. And you probably shouldn't uh, use it, even not in protected tunnel, unlike you completely control your environment and your clients. So, thank you for watching. That is it. Um, if you like this video, please like it and subscribe to our channel for more awesome videos. And I will be back soon with more videos. So, again, thank you very much.